Hey, welcome everybody uh, to the GeoNexus integration platform demonstration on enabling Esri uh, mobile apps to create work orders in IBM Maximo. My name is James Render. I'm our lead sales engineer here at GeoNexus, and I'll be uh, the host's presenter and walking through the demonstration here during the session. I have uh, various experience working with um, integrating Esri with uh, a host of different uh, EAM systems, including uh, IBM Exmo. So the integration platform is an off-the-shelf product designed to improve complexity um, in integration. So there's three uh, main pillars of the application. We have the data integration piece, which is the, uh, the box there on, starting on the left. Um, it's there for, right, for synchronization of data uh, using a full compare approach uh, to ensure integrity of your enterprise data. We have an application integration component, and uh, that's there for more of the near real-time um, integration at the application level for business process events and workflows, so aimed more at that uh, work management <coughs> solution integration. And then the, the last um, component over there on the right is the data quality piece of the application. So again, off the shelf, providing um, reporting um, and full transparency, transparency of the integration. Uh, it, it gives understanding and insight of data quality and overall the, the goal is to um, increase trust and reliability of enterprise data uh, in your organization. So with that core functionality, we have um, out-of-box connectors right available um, in the platform that can be used to connect out to your system. So today we're going to be demonstrating um, the Esri connector along with the IBM Maximo connector, but you can see we have a host of other connectors down there. Um, SAP, Oracle systems, uh, Hitachi ABB systems, and uh, a few other things coming here. So benefits um, of, the, of the platform overall. <clears throat> uh, No-code, low-code integration for utility systems. So what does that mean? Um, we're aimed at a quick stand-up time right out of the box. So <clears throat> there's no involvement necessary to develop uh, the connector to your edge system, right? It's, it's off the shelf. It's ready to go, which is going to reduce time um, and cost of IT resources, right, needed to stand up the integration and configure the integration. Um, again, so this is in the no-code, low-code model, so everything is done through a user interface um, and it's configuration, right? It's not, it's not custom scripting or anything going on here. Um, the second item there, change detection, so that is um, a method of how we actually detect um, what is going on in each system and then execute rules to, to make change in the proper system, depending on your integration rules. So, we have a method of a cell-by-cell -cell comparison uh, to ensure no discrepancies are left undetected. So rather than uh, maybe a traditional middleware where they're more uh, message brokering instructions from one side to the other, uh, we're actually <clears throat> comparing those two systems together based on the configuration and then right, uh, propagating that change uh, over and then, um, you know, overall, what is this giving? It's increasing data integrity and trustworthiness because of this comparison approach rather than a, a data push approach. Um, and then third item there is empowering the business. So this goes back to the first bullet, uh, low code, no code, right? Um, citizen developer type model, citizen integrator model, where because this is an off the shelf product, it has a user interface, that's going to enable your business side to, to actually do the configuration within the integration 
they're going to understand the, their systems um, the best, right? The data within it. Um, <clears throat> so overall, right? Again, um, it's increasing that that business power, and um, it, at at its core, what, then what does that do? That allows for the business to fully uh, realize investments in, in edge system investment. So we're going to walk through a, a situation here, a, a use case where that's kind of that's what we're using our platform to do. So on one side we have Esri, on the other side we have Maximo. You can see that <clears throat> we're, we're in the middle, technically right, we're kind of architected as a middleware. We don't exist in either system. Um, Right, there's nothing installed in either system. We exist outside of it. And then we communicate, right, through our productized connectors to the edge systems. Um, so our use case here is showing how our platform can be stowed quickly and then engaged between systems like Esri that has a whole stack of applications, including mobile applications, right? And one of those is workforce. Um, so we're going to be showing that Esri workforce mobile application um, work order, really generation application, how that can uh, essentially right create now work orders into uh, IBM Maximo, um, right? Realizing that that Esri um, mobile application potential that they have out of the box. All right. So I will flip over to the demonstration. Okay. So we're looking at um, <clears throat> Esri Workforce. And the, the application, again, is, is another uh, off-the-shelf uh, mobile application from Esri. And what you have is really two different types of, of interactions in it. So you have the dispatcher app, which is what we're looking at, that's aimed at kind of office operational side work. And then there's a mobile app, right, which is a uh, app you can download onto your, your mobile device. Um, and that engages the field worker um, to get assigned uh, field work and, and complete that field work. Um, so looking at the, the map here, you can see on the right, we're looking at a water network. Um, this is actually the water utility network. And you can see that we've dropped a work order point here and assigned it to myself um, to go out right to that, that water shutoff valve um, to check to make sure it's working, essentially. So now the mobile worker can go on their app, see that. Um, work order, right, assigned to them, and start the work. Again, this is, right, easy to stand up, right, Every, everything we're showing here is really, it's, it is out of the box, nothing um, customized here that we're doing to get this um, use case here to, to work. So, right, once we have that now, what we want to do is within the integration platform, so that's the window we're looking at currently here, we're going to go ahead and connect out to our edge systems. So we have um, a hierarchy within our application. So if you're looking on the left panel here, you'll see there's a connection section. Um, and we're looking at um, one of the connections here, right, opens the panel on the right. So um, we're looking at an ArcGIS online connection. You can see we offer um, really two major connection types, the geodatabase and then a REST connection, but then within REST, right, you can have multiple ways of, of accessing and multiple locations, really, of, of where those services are stored. So this window, right, we're just looking at AGOL. Um, again, fairly simple, you just need a REST endpoint and um, user credentials. We do have a, a portal connection established here, so I'll just flip to that quickly. So again, this is a REST endpoint, but it's instead of ArcGIS Online, it's it's through a portal connection, but the idea is the same. You have a REST endpoint and credentials. 
All right, so we'll flip to Maximo and look at that connection. So what we're seeing here is actually another REST connection. So we we have we do have two different ways we can communicate with Maximo as well. Um, we have MX server, which is RMI type. So that's more of a, you know, I guess traditional um, connection type, or I should say an older technology <laughs> connection type. And then we have REST, uh, the Maximo REST API connection here. So that's what we're gonna, that's what we're communicating with in the demonstration. And you can see again, REST is nice, right? It's a URL hosted. So we're just looking at a, a host, right? Endpoint and then credential information. All right, so once we have those connections established, we can configure. So let, let's just go ahead and take a look here at what we have um, in this use case. Uh, again, we're connecting to AGOL, which is essentially our um, workforce application right, service that we're using. And then, um, so you can see on the right panel here, that's what we're looking at hierarchy-wise. We selected AGOL. We're selecting a service within that. Um, right, that that user has access to and then a layer within the service and then <clears throat> identifying a, a unique ID on that. Um, and then you can see down here we have a where clause box which allows you to filter further down, right, if necessary um, on, a, on a specific table. So right here we're just looking for specific statuses. Um, so let's flip to the Maximo side. On the Maximo side, again, we're using the REST connection in the hierarchy and um, specific right to this maximum connection then we're drilling down through its hierarchy um, we have right organization site and then defining a bind between the two systems so what we're saying here is on the work order attribute use WONUM and the maximum side and bind it to work order ID on the GIS side, which is workforce, right? And then, again, we're filtering here. So we're gonna look at a specific status and then I'm actually filtering on a, that specific work order. So that's all we're returning here for demonstration purposes. So let's flip now how we define rules between the two systems. Now that they're aligned, how can we tell um, the, system, or the, the integration platform which rules to propagate over, right, based on that full comparison? On that that cell by cell comparison approach. Um, so, GIS to Maximo, right? That's the demonstration. That's what the use case we're showing, creating it from Workforce to Maximo, right? The Maximo work order entity, um, and then these are the the rules we're gonna um, establish over into Maximo. <clears throat> okay. So we're what we're gonna do now is go ahead and uh, run the synchronization. So we're just going to go to Maximo here and look for that 9-2 work order that we're looking at. So you can see that we have a work order, but it's not that, that work order here in the, in the water site. So I'm going to go back to uh, GeoWork Sync. Looks like we're, we're finished, so let's research that. And there's our 9902 work order that was just created. So if we go ahead, I'll show you how that, that looks in the reporting. Um, so in the console window, you can see we have a, um, a readout here of what, what occurred. So it found right the record in GIS and then created it into Maximo. So right every time that synchronization runs, a report gets generated. Um, so if you go to final status report, everything is bookmarked there on the left. You can see the console window um, reads out essentially what we were seeing in the UI and then we're going to go to the Create tab. It's going to tell us that which uh, key value right was created, so that 9902 record. Um, so let's go back to Maximo. Take a look. So there's 9902. We can go into the actual work order, um, and then let's quickly look at uh, the, some of the data we filled in here. All right. So based on the attribute mappings we had in the rules, um, right? We're creating the set of attributes here. And uh, we can see we set the status, dispatcher ID, complete date, due date, uh, 
the one I want to really draw your attention to is this dispatcher ID. So if we go look back at Maximo, you can see that we're mapping that to reported by here. So you can see it says uh, skip H. However, if um, right, if we again look at that row here, row number two, we can see that the value list um, optional column here is filled in for this row. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that means. So if I go to value list and look at dispatcher. Um, so this is a way that right we can do dynamic translation within the application. So within the Esri stack, right, there's a lot of coded value domain. Um, set up so we have a one right in GIS getting translated to to uh, something readable for Maximo right for a Maximo front end user to know what one means nothing so if we just allowed it to pass one over to that um, attribute right it would just be showing reported by one right <laughs> which doesn't necessarily help your operational scheme um, right so this is right. The software is allowing you to translate things into something else that means something in that destination application. Um, so that's just a, a small example of that. And then you can see we just filled in, you know, a few of the other attributes here, mostly data information. Um, so yeah, that that's essentially it, right? Again, a lot of this, or I should say, really all of this is is out of the box. We haven't done any customization, Maximo, or for Esri to get this to work. And then again, the integration platform is also off the shelf with our out-of-box connectors to uh, Maximo and GIS. So that wraps up the, the product demonstration. If um, you have any questions on anything that uh, you've seen here in the demonstration, again, reach out to us at, um, at here at GeoNexus. You can at that email below there, sales at geo-nexus.com um, for any questions you have. Again, um, anything you've seen in the demonstration or anything with our integration platform, right? If you had, maybe you don't have IBM Maximo and you have a different EAM and you're curious how this works in that system, again, feel free to reach out.